In this video, I'm going to be showing you sort of an introduction to waves. So we're going to start off by talking about uh, what is a wave, and then we're going to go through transverse and longitudinal waves. And uh, finally, we'll talk a little bit about example and uh, maybe even about explosions in space. Uh, to start with, I just couldn't resist this stupid joke that if you saw a light wave, would you wave back? Sorry, that's really lame. Let's just get started right away. So what is a wave? There are lots of different ways of defining it, but I'd like to define it as you know something, uh, something with the following two features: something with an oscillation. Remember, an oscillation just means something moving back and forth, and um, something that has a direction of travel. So I'm going to write that down like this: a direction of travel. Now, when I say direction of travel, I mean just that. It actually goes somewhere. This wave actually travels. And very often, though, this is actually called the direction of energy transfer. And that's because energy can be transferred from one place to another. You can send signals. You can sort of ride on these things. But basically, something with the following. Okay, so a wave, I think, is something that has an oscillation and has a direction of travel. Those are the two main features, I think, that are really important to talk about. Because now we can start off already by talking about the two main types of waves. One is called longitudinal waves. So these are waves where, um, let's see, well, let's actually write it down. So the direction of travel or energy transfer Actually, I'm going to say direction of travel, okay? But keep in mind, the direction of travel is very often the direction of energy transfer. So we'll say the direction of travel is, and we're going to say the word parallel here, is parallel uh, to the direction of oscillation. So what I mean by that is that we're going to be looking at which way it travels and which way it oscillates. So in this case, in longitudinal waves, we have a situation where this right here is the oscillation. So maybe the oscillations go left to right. And maybe the direction of travel, maybe I'll put that in red. So maybe it travels this direction like this. So this is the direction that it travels. In other words, that's the direction that the energy goes. So there's things vibrating or oscillating back and forth, and it actually travels in that direction. Now, we could do an example of that. We could say, for example, sound. Sound is, a, is a, an example of that. So, for example, in air, we have this situation. So let's say you have sound going on, and you've got little particles. So maybe you've got little air particles. And what's going to happen is uh, they're going to be sort of squished together. Um, so I'm going to draw them green, for example, showing these oscillation directions like this, like that. So these particles are all free to sort of oscillate back and forth. But see, one oscillation causes another oscillation. And maybe this signal actually goes that way. Okay, so this is the direction of travel. And this right here, these are the oscillations. Now these can even, we can go even further and call these areas right here, these are areas of compression. So that means where particles are closer together. And these areas in here are places with what we call rarefaction. Those are places where the particles are not so close together. So it's like there's areas where there's, you know, particles really close together being compressed or squished. And there's areas where they're you know, it's sort of rare to find them. That's how I remember what rarefaction means. Maybe it's a good idea to show you a little bit more about compression and rarefaction in sound waves. What I'm going to use is a little animation. So this is an animation from PHET. That's again from the University of Colorado. These guys have awesome ones. This one's called Wave Interference. I'm going to show you the one for sound. Here they've got a speaker. The speaker is sort of pushing these air molecules. And you can see these waves sort of being shown as dark and light. Light is supposed to represent sort of places of bigger oscillation, and dark is where there's less things happening. Now, the grayscale isn't so important, but let's look at the particles. 
I think this looks really cool and this actually shows you very well what's really going on here. Here we've got that these air molecules themselves, although it looks totally crazy, look carefully. Can you see the waves traveling to the right? Now be very careful what I mean by a wave. I mean a disturbance is going to the right. The particles themselves, these air molecules, are not actually traveling. Do you notice if you watch like one particular one, it just goes back and forth. So this is what happens in air. This is really what happens when you're speaking to someone, is that these molecules here just get vibrated back and forth. And do you notice the direction of travel? Let's say it goes to the right. Well, the oscillations mainly go left to right as well. So that's why we can state that this is a longitudinal wave, because these are places where the oscillations, which go left to right, are parallel to the direction of the uh, direction of energy, tra uh, energy, or you could say where the direction of travel is. So this is an example of a longitudinal wave. And now we can do more. We can see another example. This is actually something, when I was a little kid, we played with these things. It's called a slinky. I don't know if you've ever seen those before. Um, growing up in Canada, we certainly played with these as kids. So this is some sort of coil here. Uh, either it's made of metal or it can be made of plastic. And what this thing would do, the commercial showed these things sort of going downstairs, and things like that. But what I'd like to show you instead, though, is just a quick little YouTube video. Uh, and this is actually what they call a longitudinal wave. So you're going to see this little sort of scary looking disembodied hand. It's going to vibrate this coil here. And you're going to see that a pulse or a wave is traveling. Do you notice the wave is traveling to the right? And look at the oscillations. The oscillations are going left to right. So again, that's an, a longitudinal wave. That's because the direction of oscillation is parallel to the direction of energy travel or energy transfer. Okay, so that's why, uh, I mean, energy goes to the right, so the wave travels to the right. This is what's happening in a longitudinal wave. Now we can also look at something different. We can look at something called a transverse wave. Now here, where a longitudinal wave, the direction of travel was parallel to the direction of oscillation. Here in this case, we're going to say that the direction of travel Better make this a proper D here. Direction of travel or energy transfer is perpendicular. If you don't know what perpendicular means, it means you know at 90 degrees or at right angles to, um, in this case, the oscillation. So in this case, then what we've got, this is a different situation here. We've got a situation where we've got an oscillation. So in this case, maybe the oscillation goes up and down. So that'll be the direction of oscillation. So things are sort of vibrating or moving up and down. And yet the direction of travel will be perpendicular. So maybe it travels to the right like this. So sort of the way I've shown it here. So this is the direction that it travels. Maybe it goes to the right, but it oscillates up and down. Now that may sound really crazy, but we have a really good example, which is water. If you sort of splash your hands in water, that's exactly what happens. You're going to sort of create this wavy looking wave like this right here. And what happens then is that um, here we have the direction of oscillation, so that's green. Oscillation goes this way, and yet the wave will travel to the right. So in other words, you're going to see a wave sort of go to the right. We can also have an example. Um, we can say string, for example. So in a string, let's say you're holding a piece of string, and you do the same thing. You can sort of make a little vibration in the string. Well, what happens then, that little vibration can travel. So that little wave will travel this way, so it'll transfer energy to the right. But that only happens because you're oscillating these, these pieces of string up and down. So I'm going to show you what this looks like. So here we go. I can show you this one and I can show you wave on a string. I think it's this one right here. There we go. This is another PHET animation. Maybe I can make it a bit bigger. So what I'm going to do now is I just take this thing and I just oscillate it. So I just go up and down or maybe go even faster like this. Can you see what just happened here? I just go up and down and look carefully. This wave travels to the right. Watch this oscillation. I go boom move it to the right. But notice these little green particles. So this is just so you can sort of keep track of them. Do you notice they just go up and down? The particles themselves don't travel 
only the wave within them travels. So it's kind of cool. It's like you make a disturbance in the particles. So the particles carry that disturbance over, but they don't themselves actually have any net motion to the right. Notice they all stay where they were. They just go up and down and then go back to their resting place. So that's an example of um, how we can look at waves, transverse waves. An extra example is actually light. Now light is a bit weirder. Uh, because here what we have is oscillating um, sort of up and down in this sense right here. This is even more sort of 3D and a little bit more difficult to draw because the direction of travel, let's say, still to the right, and we still have an oscillation going up and down, but in this case the oscillation could be an electric field. So it turns out light is just an electric field oscillating one way, but it actually has a magnetic field that's oscillating 90 degrees to that, and the direction of travel is 90 degrees to all of them. So we can say these are orthogonal. It's hard to draw in 3D, so I have a little diagram here that shows it a bit better. So this is, for example, what light could be. Light could be drawn like this. And some people say, is light a wave or is it a particle? And we can talk about that. I have other videos where I do that. That's quantum mechanics where it's sort of a particle and a wave. But if you look at this, let's just say red. Let's just say red was uh, electric field. So maybe that's the electric field going up and down and up and down. Now the direction of travel would be this way. So in this case right here, this right here would travel that way. So it travels this way, you know, sort of down this way. And yet this one right here, that could be the magnetic field. And we write magnetic fields with the letter B. So magnetic field is sort of going like left and right and left and right. So this is sort of a 3D orthogonal sort of situation where everything is 90 degrees to everything else. But it is still an example of a transverse wave. So I think that is the key thing to remember here. We have longitudinal waves and we have transverse waves.